And last but not least, the team that finished in first in the Pacific Division last season and then uh, went, on, went all the way and did the thing. <laughs> Only <laughs> <way to play. laughs> the Vegas Golden Knights. And obviously they've had an interesting offseason. Um, you know, the departure of one Riley Smith to the Pittsburgh Penguins, the probably biggest move of the bunch outside of the re-signing of uh, Barbashev, of course, to essentially take Riley Smith's spot. But outside of that, you are talking about the core of this team being the exact same. You have had no major departures outside of that Riley Smith kind of move there. Uh, they're the same. And if they stay healthy and if you get good goaltending again from Hill and Thompson, it's been confirmed Robin Leonard's going to be out again. Uh, there is no reason why the Vegas Golden Knights could not put on a repeat performance of what they did last season. Uh, yeah, and that's that's pretty much the, 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 the vibe in the room right now is that Kelly McCrimmon addressed it. You, you don't see champions bring back their entire core. You know, when Tampa Bay went back to back, they rehauled their bottom six. You know, when Pittsburgh, when they went on their run, they overhauled. I think Colorado did a little bit of overhauling as well when they won two years ago. You don't normally see that. And this group is probably, it, it helps to win. Don't get me wrong, but it is a very tight knit group. It is a very, um, it is a, it is a locker room that gets along with everyone very well and they all have that belief in each other i mean when you got 36 year old alec martinez leading the league in block shots that's somebody that they can rally around and and they firmly believe in aiden hill and logan thompson to be the tandem going forward i don't i don't expect one to get more starts over the other i think in a perfect world you get 50 50 between them um but the big caveat is mark stone's health if if he can stay healthy now with two back surgeries he admitted on Pat McAfee's show that he fractured his wrist in game five, the night that he had a hat trick. Now, he, he oh. says that that is not as big of a deal as he portrays it to be, but it's Mark Stone, and he's a madman in and of itself, so it doesn't really surprise me that he downplays it. But if he stays healthy, that's going to be the key for the Golden Knights if they want to repeat, because he was on pace to have the best year of his career last year before the back problems kicked in again. And I talked to him last week, and he said, you know, this is the best he's felt in three, and four, three or four years. And if that's the case, that's Selkie finalist Mark Stone. That's a close to 80-point score, Mark Stone. And, you know, if he's doing this on a, loan with, on a line with Chandler Stevenson and Brett Howden, while Jack Eichel is projected to do th crazy things this year, yeah, there, there's, a, there's hardly any reason for me to think this team can't do it again if they stay healthy. It's <laughs> uh, not, yeah. The, the only problem is they're not a, they're not allowed to do it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I I don't know if I'll be in Finland this time to ease the blow. Mm. So. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, and and I I mentioned it last time I was on on the podcast here, and I too yes yeah, I said to you that this is the most deep team I've seen in a long time as far as all four lines going, all three DPRs going, and they're bringing everyone back. The only one, like you mentioned, that they have to change is who's going to replace Riley Smith on William Carlson's line. And there's a competitive battle going on in camp between four guys who have the chance to win that spot. So it, if, if that team continues to roll four lines and three DPRs and two reliable goalies, it, it's, a, it's a tough team to beat. Yeah, the crazy thing to me is that they've kind of always been that deep team from year one. Mm -hmm. And they they recognize how efficient that is, and they've made good use of it. As much as I give them shit for con like, you know, how they handle certain players being traded and how those players find out it's, you know, it's, it worked. Here's the thing. Like, my narrative doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, how brutal it is. It doesn't matter how it looks at the end of the day because they just won. A lot of people are going to copy them. That's how the NHL works. So, you know, it's even even if they fall, even if they don't get it done again, even if you know Mark Stone, eventually you know falls off due to the injury complications and and everything like that. The fact that they have no real big prospect core, they can't sustain it. It still doesn't matter because they won. And uh -huh. uh, oh, it'd be nice to win. 
<laughs> what in the... uh, it, it, to your point, like that is the key, right? Like it does not matter what happens from this point on. If they suffer a lot of injuries this year, and then at the end of the season, Martinez decides to retire, or Mark Stone is just never the same due to another injury, it doesn't matter. You you roll with the punches because you want. Yeah. That's what it is. Like I always think back to the Bruins winning in 2011. Yes, I got to mention it again on the show. Um, I always think back to that because then they made it back for 2013, and then after that was oh shit, we got to start stripping away pieces. The Johnny Boychucks of the world ending up on the Islanders, and then before you know it, the Bruins are missing the playoffs two years in a row. They landed David Posternock in the draft in that time, though, and hey, all of a sudden here they are in 2019 and. We don't have to talk about how last season ended, but <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like you can make the most of whatever opportunity is presented to you. But as long as you've won, you're good to go moving yeah. forward. It the literally gamble just paid off. Matter. The oh, gamble yeah. paid off, as Endo always was calling me. They're the Vegas high rollers. And hmm. while it may, it's, it's not the greatest long term strategy, they weren't looking for long term. The second that they saw what they did in that first year, Vegas just said, OK, we're we're going all in, literally. And how fitting for them to be Vegas and continuing to make these gambles and them continuing to kind of pay off despite the fact of how awesome it was last year or the year before last when Vegas completely kind of pooped after getting Jack Eichel. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, finally reap, <laughs> reap what you sow or whatever. And then they come back and win the cup, of course, because I can't <laughs> I can't have nice things. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's it, it worked. And that that's the cool thing. I don't know if we'll ever see a team pull that off again which is it's it's pretty crazy like just the amount of continual bets that they made making high level trades signing high level guys and then it, it works like they they kind of franchise moded their way and won a cup because of it i i guarantee you you will never see a team use five goalies including their <laughs> ahl starter for two of them yeah and jonathan quick of all people mm. to basically carry the ship but the, the, the one important piece in all this, and again, it still boggles my... And I, and I understand there were other deserving candidates this year for the Jack Adams, but for Bruce Cassidy to not be a finalist last year mm. is still the most baffling thing to me, given the situation of what he had coming out of the All-Star break and then had to work his way to the top seed in the West and push his team on a dominant run to win the Cup. Like... It That's was, insane. Was a, he wasn't even a finalist. No. I assumed he was a shoe in for a finalist. That's I thought he would have okay. been. But I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. You know, we got Lindy Ruff and Dave Hackstall and Jim Montgomery. Of course, those three different stories that are deserving. But Bruce Cassidy should have absolutely been a finalist for the Jack Adams. And he th- talk about you know high rolling and gambles. For as good as Bruce Cassidy is. I've, I always thought it was a huge gamble to move on from Pete DeBoer because I felt like he should have had at least one more year with that group fully healthy and then to see what could have happened. But, you know, they made the decision when they did. Bruce lands in Kelly McCrimmon's lap and they're off and running. So yeah. it, it, it obviously worked out, but that, that, was, that was the gamble that I think really started everything with this group. I could see the Pacific Division winding up eerily similar to what it was last season for all the reasons we just talked about the complete package that you have with vegas edmonton you got that x factor of the depth the kings the gold tending i could see it ending up very very close to what it was last season um, honestly if i had to put money on it i would say the only change that we see is maybe you flip seattle la and san jose anaheim that's exactly and then pretty what I was much. Say, yeah. yeah, then you pretty much call it good. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing a surprise, though. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Vancouver or Calgary figure their fucking shit out. Please, for the love of God, figure your shit out. Especially Vancouver, you got to stop wasting the two star players in particular that I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, with that, gentlemen, I think uh, I think it was a good talk. It was a good talk, yeah. and. Uh, 